Welcome to QD Video, brought to you by Room Now Live. It's a master class for those who want to master rheumatology. Check it out at roomnow.live. Our case today is the coexistence of RA and gout. Is it possible? Just saw an 80 year old gentleman who's had rheumatoid arthritis for about the last 10 years. He's also had the diagnosis of gout. Uh, he's currently on 100 of allopurinol, actually 200 allopurinol, I just increased it to 300. Uh, he's on five milligrams of prednisone and currently taking leflunamide. Although he's been on uh, methotrexate and in uh, biologics in the past, now it is, uh, at his current age, he's trying to avoid the biologics because of cost issues. Anyway, he's on allop uh, allopurinol and he's on Areva. Areva, by you, uh, as you know, is a drug that also can lower uric acid levels by being a mild or weak uricosuric drug. So I don't know about you, but I have, when I'm teaching people, I've always said that you can't have gout and rheumatoid arthritis. Usually when you see, as a, as a consultant, gout and rheumatoid arthritis, it's because one or the other is the wrong diagnosis made by people in primary care or people less skilled than you. And that's entirely possible because rheumatoid factor is seen in 20 million Americans. Uh, hyperuricemia, you know, if gout is in 8.3 million Americans and nephrothiasis is in 20 million Americans, hyperuricemia has got to be somewhere in between those numbers. So it's not uncommon to have RA and a random uh, elevated uric acid or have gout and a random elevated rheumatoid factor. But it turns out that when you look at this, it, it does happen. And every rheumatologist will tell you they've got a few patients where they're pretty certain they have gout and RA, or they're a little concerned that this could be gout or, or, or um, RA, and they're sort of straddling the fence on management. My patient, I'm not straddling the fence, clearly RA, RA erosions, uh, rheumatoid factor and CCP, P, CCP, clearly gout with sporadic gout-like attacks and hyperuricemia up to a uric acid of 10. The, I think, again, the definitive way would be to tap the joint and show there's crystals there as well. I didn't do it in this case. I have done that in the past. What I've gleaned from the literature on the subject is you can have the coexistence. Although I think it's still good to teach there is a, a negative association between the two. That's what you should be telling your primary care audience. So there are a few studies that show that amongst gout patients, RA occurs in two to 3.8%. There's one study I saw that shows amongst gout patients, RA occurs, uh, sorry, amongst um, RA patients, gout occurs in up to 3% of patients. So it's out there. What's the profile of someone who gets gout and RA? Tend to be male, tend to be older, tend to have elevated creatinines. They also tend to just have one um, autoantibody, not CCP and rheumatoid factor. They have one or the other, and usually not in sky high levels but they also have hyperuricemia. It's said that 75% of these cases, gout precedes the diagnosis of RA, which again makes me think, were they, was that the right diagnosis or not? Do you have documentation or not? Have you seen it? Again, I wouldn't say these coexist until you've seen it and you've diagnosed it. Hearsay is not something you need to deal with going forward. Uh, again, patients tend to do better with their gout when their RA is controlled. So can uncontrolled RA provoke gout attacks? No one really has answered that question. But I find it interesting that these two can, co can coexist, especially when I've been saying for years, can't have gout and RA together. Those are my final words. I'm sticking to them until I'm proven otherwise.